Hi, thanks for joining me <clears throat> while I show you this uh, time-lapse demo of a still life painting that I did in my backyard of these lemons. Um, I'm painting on a French easel, which was easy just to lug from my porch. Um, I certainly wouldn't travel with this. And I'm painting on a cradle panel that's been pre-toned with, I think, some uh, cadmium red light. Um, I work on a Masterson palette, uh, and I've got my colors all laid out on my palette garage. Uh, what you can see I'm doing right now is just kind of sketching in um, uh, the broad shapes. And I was struck by the, the really dark background, and so I'm coming in with a really dark green and just toning everything that's in the background of the table um, with that uh, really dark, uh, dark green color. And I'll come in over that um, later with some of the foliage to uh, kind of bring that out a little bit and, and make it pop. So uh, just refining the shape a little bit. Um, when I originally recorded this, it was uh, an hour long, and so I'm not going to put you through that, but that's why you see me turning around and talking to the camera. Uh, uh, I uh, picked this, um, this view because I saw the um, lemons and then those purple flowers, and of course those are complementary colors, and so um, I thought that that would be um, nice. What I'm doing at this point is um, starting with my darks, and so I'm putting in, um, I think they are the, just the shadow that is being cast um, onto the table um, by the plate. Um, and I have no idea what I just did over there. Um, I'm mixing up some yellow, and I think one of the most challenging colors is understanding what yellow in shadow is. Um, it's it's funny. I think it sometimes changes. Sometimes yellow and shadow is really just green, um, but other times it takes on sort of a rusty um, reddish color. And um, in this situation, you know, there's just nothing better than painting from life because you can really um, just look at that and um, and see what you see. coming in with some of the lights now, the lights of the plate, just to kind of pop those out. This is a small canvas. This is an 8 by 10. Well, it's not a canvas. It's a panel, but 8 by 10. So now I'm coming in with the white of the table. Um, I'll throw those um, stripes in a little bit later. So cleaning things up. It's nice to get a... Um, Kind of a clean palette before you sort of launch into another color. Uh, so for greens, I um, will sometimes use a tube green, like sap green or viridian, um, and sometimes I'll, I'll mix my own, and sometimes I do a, a combination of both. It really just depends. Um, green is one of those things where it's really nice to have um, some different options and to mix it up you know here in New England when you paint oh my gosh everything is green and so uh, what I'm doing here is just trying to, to develop um, a uh, kind of series that I can choose from trying to pre-mix a few different colors and you can see already that I'm even though it's still pretty dark I'm lightening it up up ah, we had a cameo appearance from my dog Harbor so and you can see how some of those lights are starting to just kind of pop right out now on top of the, um, the foliage. And it really gives you a sense of the depth um, by uh, kind of doing it that way rather than putting in a mass of, of the lighter color. I like the way that it kind of brings out um, what's behind it. Um, again, trying to bring out some of that, um, that stuff that's in front. I'm trying to vary my brush strokes a little bit to reflect the different types of foliage um, uh, and you know kind of give you an idea that it's not all the same plant so to try to make the leaves a slightly different shape um, and bring that out in, in that way. What's a little hard to see, um, because I think it's to the left of the screen, is that there were some really beautiful 
bluish flowers. I'm trying to think. I think it was um, sage um, that was growing in the garden at that time. And so again, because it's small um, and you can't really see, um, I was coming in with some blues um, to, um, to demonstrate those flowers. And then I'll um, come back. When I work, I, I rarely finish one spot before really starting the others. Um, as I create a painting, I, I really kind of bounce around a little bit to um, make sure that sort of one part is talking to the next. So I, I generally do start by blocking in my entire canvas. I try to get rid of whatever the, the underneath color is, although I try to let a little of that poke through. Um, to warm up what's what's above um, but then I really um, kind of bounce from one spot to the other uh, bringing it up kind of all together um, rather than fully completing um, say the area of interest and then m moving on so I'm just refining that shape refining that drawing that's what I love about oil paint is that you can really um, just go in and fix your mistakes. You know, in my real life, in my daytime life, I'm my um, OBGYN, and one of the things that I do is do surgery. And let me tell you, <laughs> a lot harder to fix your mistakes there if they happen to be made. And so it's given me a great attitude, I think, about painting, which is that if something doesn't work, I'll fix it. And if I can't fix it, it's just a painting. It's not a person. It's not, you know, life and death type of thing. It's a painting. And even in a painting that doesn't work, uh, I'll still have learned something. So I put in those little stripes there. Um, you can see, uh, get a few more in to refine those. Um, and just to kind of, you know, give you the idea of it, and not just a flat surface. Um, when all was said and done, um, I was pretty happy with this painting, and I thank you for watching.